Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. So sticking with the uh, topic of smoldering multiple myeloma, um, how do you define and treat high-risk smoldering multiple myeloma? So the standard of care for smoldering mul multiple myeloma is really there should be no treatment. Having said that, you know, there's a lot of interest in this whole smoldering myeloma field. Um, there's a lot of clinical trials. The Spanish just published their uh, uh, experience with lenalidomide and dexamethasone in the high-risk smoldering multiple myeloma patients as defined by the Spanish group. And this was a Curadex study, which was uh, presented and published um, in the New England Journal last year. And the way they defined high risk was used immunophenotypic markers because they have the luxury of having flow cytometry. And they also looked at immune paresis in addition to what the Mayo Clinic has traditionally used as high risk smoldering myeloma, that is having bone marrow involvement, having a certain amount of monoclonal protein, which is three grams in most cases. Uh, so all of that was incorporated into trying to identify high-risk features for smoldering myeloma. And in that specific study, they used lenalidomide with dexamethasone compared to control or placebo. And what they did show there was the progression-free survival was certainly much, much, much improved in patients who got lenalidomide and dexamethasone. But they also saw a survival advantage, which again brings up the question of, are we really good at picking up high-risk smoldering myeloma, which is where, you know, the imaging modalities I talked about were not incorporated even in the Spanish study. If you look at the Spanish study, there was a lot of progressive disease in the control arm, and this was either bony progression or renal dysfunction, and um, they did see a survival disadvantage also for the placebo group. So I don't think we've all adopted using Lendex for patients with high-risk smoldering myeloma just as yet. I think this is an area of great investigation, great interest. There's a lot of different clinical trials, and I would encourage people to, you know, at least go on to the clinicaltrials.gov website site. At my site, we have a vaccine approach, which we are trying. We're using a tripeptide vaccine. It's called PVX410. Uh, uh, and what it does is it's a uh, tripeptide against three different proteins. And these proteins include CS1, which is the same uh, protein which is targeted by elotuzumab, a monoclonal antibody in development in multiple myeloma. The other proteins include CD138, which is essentially how we diagnose myeloma. And the third protein is XBP1, and we've shown preclinically XBP1 is a very important protein which is expressed on all myeloma cells. So that's uh, an approach. There's a bunch of different uh, investigators around the country and around the world who are looking at this issue of high-risk smoldering myeloma, and can we do something about these patients. There's studies from the NIH where they've used triplet combinations, so even if they have smoldering myeloma, they've used combinations like carfilzomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone in that group of patients. I do think we still need to do a better job of defining what high risk is. We're still going by very old criteria, which are really 30 years old now, where we go by, you know, you treat symptomatic myeloma if you make all the diagnostic criteria for myeloma and then have the CRAB criteria. And the CRAB criteria, clinical criteria, that's a high calcium, renal dysfunction, anemia, and bone disease. But there's a lot of subtlety in those. And now there are a whole lot of investigators, even at this meeting, where folks have come up with different thresholds for what really is high risk. And that includes looking at the serum-free light chain ratio, looking at cytogenetics in the abnormal clone, and looking at certain high-risk features there, because those are the ones who are more likely to progress, and those would be the ones you'd want to incorporate into some of your clinical trials. The other group, um, uh, there's a poster here where they've looked at, again, the immunophenotype of some of these cells. And if you have a certain phenotype where the cells look larger and more granular, uh, the view is that these folks are going to progress to myeloma sooner rather than later. And, you know, most of us 
are very interested in trying to capture that patient population and really treat early. And some of us also believe that the high-risk so-called smoldering myeloma is really very early multiple myeloma. Well, the current standard of care for high-risk smoldering right now is observation. Uh, there is an ongoing ECOG trial uh, that I'm the national leader on, randomizing patients to either lenalidomide or observation with either intermediate or high-risk smoldering myeloma. Now, one of the changes to this definition is that there may be a subgroup of patients that actually have myeloma, but we don't call them myeloma. They don't have any of that end organ damage that we talked about previously, but we know using certain testing that there's a high risk that they're going to develop end organ damage within a year. And those are patients who have greater than 60% plasma cells in the bone marrow or patients that have a free light chain ratio of greater than 100. And actually in the next few months, the International Myeloma Working Group is going to work to redefine those patients as myeloma as opposed to calling them smoldering, which is what we've done for the last decade.